we're going to tackle part two in our series on Egypt and the Bible. All right. Now, last time we talked about how Ishmael and Hagar and lost in the wilderness and the Lord provided for them and that his mother took him a wife out of the land of Egypt. Okay. Here's, we're going to pick up today talking about the enormous river in Egypt. Egypt's enormous river, the Nile. It is the southern boundary. Now get this, folks. It is the southern boundary of the land which God promised to Abraham in Genesis 15, 18. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Okay, fourth point. Egypt's expanding resources. Now this became the means of survival for the children of Israel. Now we're going to consider two factors in this matter. Number one, the providence of God was behind the wickedness of Joseph's brothers. And we're going to take a look at Genesis 37 verses 22 to 28 and then verse 36 and then we're going to skip ahead to chapter 50 verses 15 to 26. All right, so here we go. Genesis 37, 22. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands to deliver him to his father again. Let me pause right there. Uh, Reuben didn't want to kill Joseph. He, was, he convinced them to throw him in a pit, and Reuben's idea was, I'll go back later and get him. Okay. Continuing on. And it came to pass when Joseph was come unto his brethren that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. And they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread and they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels bearing spicery and balm and myrrh going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah said unto his brethren, What profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood? Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites, and let not our hand be upon him, for he is our brother and our flesh. And his brethren were content. Then there passed by Midianites, merchantmen, and they drew and lifted up, lifted up Joseph out of the pit, and sold Joseph to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and they brought Joseph into Egypt. Now verse 36 and the Midianites sold him into Egypt unto Potiphar an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. Now we're going to take a look at uh, chapter 50 of Genesis verses 15 to 26. Here we go. And when Joseph's brethren saw that their father was dead they said Joseph will peradventure hate us, and will certainly requite us of all the evil which we did unto him. And they sent a messenger unto Joseph, saying, Thy father did command before he died, saying, So shall you say unto Joseph, Forgive, I pray thee now, the trespass of thy brethren and their sin, for they did evil unto thee, they did unto thee evil, and now we pray thee, forgive the trespass of the servants of the God of thy father. And Joseph wept when they spake unto him. And his brethren also went and fell down before his face, and they said, Behold, we be thy servants. And Joseph said unto them, Fear not, for, I am, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, ye thought evil against me, but God meant it for good, to bring to pass, as it is this day, to save much people alive. Now therefore, fear ye not, I will nourish you and your little ones. And he comforted them and spake kindly unto them. And Joseph dwelt in Egypt, he and his father's house. And Joseph lived an hundred and ten years. And Joseph saw Ephraim's children of the third generation. The children also of Machir, the son of Manasseh, were brought up upon Joseph's knees. Joseph's knees. And Joseph said unto his brethren, I die, and God will surely visit you and bring you out of this land, unto the land which he sware to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. 
And Joseph took an oath of the children of Israel, saying, God will surely visit you, and you shall carry up my bones from hence. So Joseph died, being 110 years old, and they embalmed him, and he was put in a coffin in Egypt. Ain't that something? Now, the second point we want to talk about is the prosperity of God was upon Joseph. Now we're going to flip back and go to Genesis 39, verses 1 to 5, then verses 20 to 23, then we're going to go to chapter 41, verses 39 to 45, verses 50 to 52, and then 56 to 57. Okay, starting with Genesis 39, 1 to 5. Here we go. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the god, an Egyptian, bought him out of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house. And all that he had he put into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house, and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. Now, verse 20. And Joseph's master took him and put him into the prison, a place where the king's prisoners were bound. And he was there in the prison. But the Lord was with Joseph and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. The keeper of the prison looked not to, not to anything that was under his hand, because the Lord was with him. Isn't that wonderful? And that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Now, let's flip to chapter 41, verse 39. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, Forasmuch as God hath showed thee all this, there is none so discreet and wise as thou art. Thou shalt be over my house, and according unto thy word shall all my people be ruled. Only in the throne will I be greater than thou. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph's hand and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain around his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I am Pharaoh, and without thee shall no man lift up his hand or foot in all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh called Joseph's name, Zaphnath Paniah, and he gave him to wife Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On. And Joseph went out over all the land of Egypt. Now let's flip to verse 50. We're going to read verses 50 to 52. And unto Joseph was born two sons before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potipharah, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God said, He hath made me forget all my toil. Isn't that wonderful? And all my father's house. And the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of my affliction. Now to verse 56. And the famine was over all the face of the earth, and Joseph opened all the storehouses, and sold unto the Egyptians, and the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all countries came into Egypt to Joseph for to buy corn, because that the famine was so sore in all the lands. All right, that's the end of part two.